Hello friend, Bayless Conley here. I'm so glad that you have joined me. I want to ask you something. If you wouldn't mind just investing the next 25, 30 minutes with me, if you can, if you have a Bible, grab it, sit down, and let's take a look at God's Word together. There's some things that I want to share with you today that I believe can help you immensely. They're very basic, and yet we, we sometimes miss the most basic of things. Welkom bij Antwoorden met Belis Kanli. God ziet je. Hij houdt van je. En wat er ook aan de hand is, Hij heeft de antwoorden op je vragen. I want to read to you from the book of Proverbs in chapter 3. And you know, I, I love Proverbs. The book of Proverbs sort of transcends both the Old Testament and the New Testament. It is God's eternal wisdom. So Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. I love verse 6. We, we just read, it said, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So whatever it is that you're doing, if it, if it is business, if it is raising family, if you're purchasing a home, if you're going to rent a new flat, um, when it comes to choosing friends, uh, when it comes to your activities, wh wh whatever it is, in all of your ways, in everything you do, acknowledge him and he shall direct you your paths. Now, the word acknowledge literally means in the Hebrew language to listen and to look for. To listen and to look for. So what, whatever we're doing, whatever we're considering doing, we need to look and listen for God's wisdom and God's direction. You know, so many difficulties could be avoided if we would just look and listen for God to direct us. Um, so many pitfalls could be avoided if we would just look and listen for God's wisdom, and he does want to direct us. You know, in the New Testament, it, it asks the question in the book of James, D does any of you lack wisdom? You don't know what to do? Well, ask God, and he'll give it to you liberally, and he won't find fault. You just need to ask in faith. Now, this says that if we will acknowledge him, if we'll look and listen for God's wisdom in, in all of our ways, that he will direct our path. And the word direct um, certainly means that he's going to show us the way we should go. But it means much more than that. It actually carries with it the idea of empowerment to carry out the task that we're um, considering engaging in or doing. But it also means this in the original language It means to remove obstacles out of the way. It means to make a pathway smooth, to make it straight. So, so yes, God, it, God will say, this is the way you need to go. But it implies empowerment, and it implies that he will remove obstacles out of that pathway. He'll direct our path, and he'll remove obstacles. Question, do you have any obstacles in your life right now, things that are are hindering you from going forward. It might be, you know, great, great uh, uh, bouts with physical illness. That can be a huge obstacle in life that, that you can't work. You, you can't be with your family the way you want to because there's just these constant bouts with sickness. Uh, an obstacle could be depression. And I know there are some people that suffer deep, dark, depression. I've had some dear friends that have struggled with that in their life, and oh, what an obstacle it can be. It could be a lack of finances that, you know, you, you just don't have, you know, the money to do what you need to do or to take care of what needs to be taken care of. The obstacle may have to do with your family. It may have to do with relationships. It may have to do with your job. It may have to do with your spiritual life. You know, whatever form that takes, the, the answer is found in looking for 
and listening for and acknowledging God and getting his wisdom. If we'll acknowledge him, if we'll look and listen for. So l- let's just say that, you know, I've, I've got a, a business opportunity and there, there's a lot of unknowns in it. You know, this, this could end up being great. It could end up providing for me and my family. It could be an answer to prayer. Um, or if it goes wrong, it could set me back years. And so I, I get on my knees and I'm praying and I'm spending time in God's word, reading, and I'm saying, God, I just ask for your direction. I'm listening and I get quiet. And God will begin to speak to me. He'll begin to direct me and speak to my heart. You know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. It is the most natural thing in the world for the Lord's sheep to follow him as the shepherd. He said, they know my voice. And then he he said this in verse 7, and we read it. Verse 6 again, in all your ways acknowledge him. Look and listen for him. And then he will direct your paths. He'll show you the way to go. He'll empower you. He'll remove the obstacles. And then the next verse, verse 7 says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. In other words, don't think that you're smarter than God. Don't think that your way is better. You need to do what he says. You need to do what he shows you. Some of the the wisest words that have ever been uttered were by Mary, the mother of Jesus, there at the wedding feast, Cana of Galilee. You know, she's gone to her son, Jesus, said, son, they don't have any wine. And then she told the servants at the feast, says, whatever he says to you, do it. Not whatever he says to you, think about it. Whatever he says to you, pray about it. Whatever he says to you, reject. No, whatever he says to you, do it. And those are wise words. And and I want to encourage you, whatever he directs you to do, do it. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't think that your way is better or that you're smarter than God. You know, we we read in verse 5, it says that we're to trust the Lord with all of our heart and not lean to our own understanding. Are you trusting or are you leaning? You know, One of the greatest reasons that obstacles remain in front of God's people and continually hinder them is because instead of trusting, they're leaning. Instead of trusting the Lord with all of our heart, we're leaning to our own understanding. I remember when our oldest son, Harrison, was probably seven years old, and I told him to bring the trash cans in, that the 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 you know, trash truck had come by and, you know, taken the trash. And so he's going to, that's his job as a seven-year-old boy to bring the empty trash cans in. Well, he doesn't want to go out. We have two of them. He didn't want to go get one and then bring the other. So he puts one of the cans inside of the other one. So he's just got to make one trip. All right, clever, good. But he gets them back to the place where they're stored and then he can't separate them. And he's just going to leave them. And I'm watching him and I come out and I say, Harrison, I said, get those trash cans separated. He says, Dad, I can't. I said, well, you're not coming in the house until you get it done. And he pulled and he he pulled and I went and sat next to him. I said, son, this is what you need to do. And he said, that won't work. And he's tugging and he's tugging. And finally, he's frustrated. He sits down and he's crying. He says, they won't come apart. They won't come apart. I said, well, you're not coming in. You can't come in the house until you get the job done. I said, now, I told you what to do. Listen to your father. And he said, it's not going to work. And he finally, reluctantly did it the way that I said, and boop, the can popped out easily. It it dislodged from the other one. And I, I think, how much is that like us and God so much of the time? We're desperately trying to get a problem dislodged from our life, but it sticks. You know, whether, you know, it's a a financial problem, an emotional problem, a family problem, a business, whatever it is, and we're tugging and we're tugging, and and God is telling us what to do, but what we refuse because we're wise in our own eyes. We're leaning to our own understanding. Friend, God is smarter than us. Let's say the problem is lack. All right, that, that can be a huge problem. I and mean, we, we, we need money to pay the rent. 
we've got to put fuel in our automobile. We've got the payment on our automobile. Uh, we got to get clothes for our kids. We got to put food on the table. All of those things cost money. So lack can be a huge hindrance. It can be a huge obstacle. All right, listen to this. This is the same verses that we were just reading. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, look and listen for him. He'll direct your path. He'll remove the obstacles. Don't be wise in your own eyes. And then he says this in verse 9 of Proverbs 3. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, the people living in that day and that, that you know, agricultural society understood that. The, the, the first fruits that came out on the trees, that came out on the vines, they brought the first and the best to God as an offering. And for us, it just can translate into the fact that God will bless you, but you need to honor him with your possessions and bring him your first and your best. If you do that, God will bless you. And I know people think, well, that won't work. I don't understand. If, if, I, if I give away my first and my best, I'm going to have la less. That doesn't make sense. There's no way that that could work out. Lean not. Don't lean on your own understanding. Stop being wise in your own eyes. Trust the Lord with all of your heart. But, 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 it doesn't make sense. Lean not. I remember many years ago, there was a couple that came into the church, and frankly, I didn't think they were Christians. It was an older couple, and they just had no sense of the life of God about them. In fact, they were on the border of what I would call cynical. They were very, very oppressed. It was obvious to see, you know, from their countenance and from the things that they would say. And, uh, it wasn't immediate, but over a period of time, things began to change for them. And they actually came and talked to me. They said, Pastor, you know, when we came, we were in such deep debt. It looked like there was no way out. It was absolutely impossible for us to get out of the debt we were in. And whenever you would get up and you would teach on giving, you would teach what the scriptures, they said, we knew it was clear it's like those, those verses we just read from Proverbs 3, uh, verses 9 and 10, to honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of all of your increase, and then your barns will be filled with plenty, your, your vats will overflow with new wine. You know, that and you know, whether it was tithing, bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. If I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing for you, you'll not have room enough to receive it. And I know some people right away say, oh, yeah, tithing, that's, that's you know, that's, that's legalistic. Well, not necessarily. You know, the Bible in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, says that Abraham is, is the father of faith, that we are to follow in the footprints of Abraham's faith. And uh, I look at the life of Abraham, and he actually tithed, and that means to honor God with the first tenth, that's all the tithe means, just to give God the first tenth of your income. And Abraham did that, you know, out of honor and a response of gratitude to God. He did it before the law ever came into existence. Now, it was incorporated into the law as a part of the law, but it, it existed before the law. Now, if I'm going to walk in the footprints of Abraham's faith, I, I'm going to honor God and show God gratitude and declare that, that he is the most high, the possessor of heaven and earth, which is what Abraham did when he brought the the tithe to God's priest. And so I, I, I do it for the same reason in the same way. It's not a legalistic thing with me, but I do it as a matter of honor, as a matter of principle, and as a matter of faith. And that, that's the way we teach it here at Cottonwood Church. And, and as well, going back to the story about this older couple that, that were, you know, cynical and, and so oppressed because they were so deeply in debt. You know, I would teach along those lines and we would go to the book of Corinthians where you know, talking about giving into God's work, those that so sparingly will reap sparingly, you know, those that so bountifully will reap bountifully, and that God actually multiplies uh, what we sow. It brings blessing, 
you know, to people, but it also brings blessing back to us. And they told me, said, you know, that pastor that graded on us so much, but we knew it was right. But we just couldn't figure out, like, we're so deeply in debt. This doesn't make sense. But we're not to lean to our own understanding. We're not to lean to human reasoning. We're to trust the Lord with all of our heart. And so they said, you know, we began to honor God. We began to give him the first part of our income. And it, it didn't happen right away. But over a period of time, God got them out of debt. I remember the wife, she got this fabulous job. She actually, she became one of the top people in her field in the state of California. Made, made a, a fabulous salary. God just blessed them. And, and it changed everything about them. They paid off all their debts. They went to our Bible college. And then, you know, they're in their latter years. And then God was using them in effective ministry, you know, to lift and to help and to bless others. But they came to a point where they had to make the decision, all right, God, this doesn't make sense to me, but I'm going to trust you with all of my heart. And I'm not going to lean to my own reasoning or to my own understanding. If you want the obstacles to be moved out of your way, you need to cease from your own understanding, your own logic, your own reason, your own wisdom. Trust God with all of your heart. You know, there's a story in 2 Kings that um, I'd like to read to you, and it sort of illustrates the same point. It uh, says this in 2 Kings chapter 3. And I'm going to begin around verse 9. It's a real interesting story. Three kings came together, king of Israel, the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. And they're going to go to battle, you know, against the Moabites. And it says in verse 9, So the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and the king of Edom, and they marched on a roundabout route seven days. By the way, the king of Israel was the one that determined this roundabout route that they were going to go on. And there was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. You know, this human nature. We make stupid decisions and then we blame God. Anyway, Jehoshaphat, he was the king of Judah. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Well, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water over the hands of Elisha. So they, they, they bring the prophet, and the prophet says this, Bring me a musician, in verse 15. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, Thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. And he said, uh, for thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. It's not hard for God at all. I mean, he speaks and, and stars are born. You know, he divides the waters of the Red Sea with a word. This is not hard in the sight of the Lord, and he will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Verse 20. Now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by the way of Edom and the land was filled with water. It made no sense. It's crazy. Can you imagine their minds? Like, all right, we're already exhausted. The troops are spent. The animals are spent. We have no water. And God says, dig ditches. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. He'll remove the obstacles out of the way and he will empower you. So they did it. Didn't make sense. It defied logic, but they went out and dug the ditches and God empowered them to do it. The soldiers did not collapse due to heat exhaustion, you know, or due to the fact that they, they, they were dehydrated. And they did it, and God supernaturally brought water. In fact, the story goes on in the morning, you know, the, the, the sky is red in the morning, and the Moabites see that the, 
the reflection that that, that that early morning red sky on the water, and the only thing they think, that's blood. The, the, the armies of these three kings have started fighting with each other, and they've killed each other, and the, the land is just filled with their blood. Come on, let's go take the spoil. And they go down by this time, all of the animals, all of the troops of, of Edom, Israel, and Judah, they're refle- refreshed, and they slaughter the Moabites, just like God said would happen. But again, it made no sense. Someone says, Pastor, what is it you are trying to do exactly? I'm trying to help you dig ditches. There's something that God wants you to do in your circumstance. And listen, I realize that there's people watching me that you're facing a myriad of obstacles. There's got to be a single mother watching me right now. You got little kids, you love them with all your heart but you don't know what to do. You, you work and work and you, you've got to pay daycare, got to pay somebody to take care of the kids, or maybe they're old enough to be in school and you've got to be in work and they've got to be picked up and you've got to pay the rent on your flat and you just, you don't have enough money to make ends meet. It's like, God, what do I do? Listen, sweetheart, God loves you. He loves you and he sees your dilemma and he wants to help you. Now, I don't know what his wisdom is for you, but if you will get in his book, he will speak to you from the scriptures and he'll show you what to do. If you'll ask him for wisdom, if you'll acknowledge him, if you'll look and listen, the great shepherd will speak to you, little lamb. He'll show you what to do, but then you've got the decision, do I trust with my heart or do I I, lean to my own understanding. You know, God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Listen to this from Isaiah chapter 55. It says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. That's what we're talking about. Seek him. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Sometime you've got to forsake your thoughts before the mercy of God can touch you. It says, forsake your way, forsake your thoughts, return to the Lord, and then he'll have mercy. You know what? Sometimes if we stubbornly cling to our own logic, to our own thinking, when God has clearly, you know, shown us the pathway he wants us to take, that that one wrong thought can keep his mercy and his blessing from reaching us. He goes on in verse 8 of Isaiah 55, says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. You know, it's just so important that we, we listen to what God's telling us. I remember years ago, we were actually meeting in a, a building not too far from where I'm sitting now. We had multiple services and, and people had to sit outside. We couldn't fit them all inside and We'd have to open the doors so they could hear. They would sit down the hallways, and we'd run a speaker down the hallways. There just wasn't an inch of room. And we'd been saving um, in a building fund, and we'd been looking and looking for property, for a building, for a warehouse we could rent, just everywhere. And nothing opened up. Just nothing happened. And as I was in prayer one day, I felt like the Lord told me that we were supposed to give the building fund into a, another ministry, a man that was had great traction and was really making an impact in, in our country at the time. And so I went to the elders and I said, guys, you know, this is what I feel like the Holy Spirit has told me. We're supposed to give our building fund away. It's like, pastor, you know, we've been saving up. We need this, you know, for a down payment on a property or a building. We, we need it. I said, well, you know, nothing's opened up and we've been looking for months and months and months and months. And I just feel like it's God. Let's just pray. And so we all got together and we prayed and every one of them had the same witness in their heart. We need to do this. And so we told the church, said, you know, the, the leadership team, the elders, we we feel like God wants us to do this. And we're just trusting him that he's going to open a door for us. And you know what? Something opened up immediately after that. And I don't have time to tell you now, but it was supernatural God got us a piece of property that was far beyond anything that we could have imagined, and we ended up in this new building. It was amazing, but it was a matter of trusting or leaning. And I want to encourage you today, trust the Lord with all of your heart. 
Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. He will empower you. He'll show you the way to go and he'll remove obstacles out of the way. And dear friend, as I close, I just want to tell you, you are known by God and you are loved by God. He sees you, he knows your circumstance and your situation. And I just want to tell you, you can expect him to help you look for him and you will find him. Look with all of your heart. And I just want to end by saying thank you to those of you that, that support us and, and that, that, that help us to, to bring this encouragement to other people. And if you've been encouraged, why not pray about helping us to bring the same encouragement to other people around the world. And until next time, I pray that God would richly bless you. We'll see you again. Heeft de preek je aan het denken gezet? Dan hebben we voor jou een gratis aanbod op onze website over het onderwerp Ervaar de kracht van God. God wil je dragen als je zwak bent. Hij heeft de kracht en wil je deze kracht elke dag opnieuw geven. Maar hoe kunnen we deze kracht dan ontvangen? Belus Condi heeft een boekje over dit onderwerp geschreven. Ontdek Gods kracht voor jou. Download het boekje gratis op belus-condi.nl slash kracht en laat God je op zijn schouders tillen. Hier vind je nog meer antwoorden op levensvragen. Er is elke dag een nieuwe overdenking van Belis, die je online kunt lezen of die je per e-mail kunt ontvangen. Als je op de hoogte wilt blijven van de preken, kun je je abonneren op ons kanaal. God zegen.